primarily I work in finance, uh, in academic finance with Trinity College Dublin. Um, I teach uh, investment markets, I teach investment analysis and high frequency trading and algorithmic trading as well for the master's program. Um, I also work as an advisor in financial services, uh, advising primarily investment funds uh, and institutional investors. Um, I work with the global markets. Uh, my main specialization would be in European, Western European markets, but I do cover sometimes also Russia and um, Commonwealth of Independent States as well. The financial sector has been analyzing data and predicting outcomes for decades, but how has this changed recently as technology advances? Well, I think the first thing that has changed is that we're starting to realize the limits to our data analytics capabilities, especially in finance, especially when it comes to the forecasting. If you were talking to me 10 years ago, we would be much more confident, much more cocky about our abilities to predict in financial markets what's going to happen tomorrow. Today, most of us would be honestly admitting that we have no clue. Um, in addition to it, of course, what changed is the quantum of data that has been flowing and access to data. It is much cheaper now to get to, that, to data itself. Give you another tangible example. If you were to look 10 years ago, 15 years ago in Ireland, we would have no idea where the bank's performance across the major parameters such as the capital ratios and the likes are. Today, these are reported much more frequently and publicly available as well. So analysts like myself can step in and get that data. For example, the supply of data from the Eurostat, CSO, the European Central Bank and the likes has improved dramatically, data presentation improved dramatic dramatically, reporting and the likes. All of that is good, all of that is giving us more power and better understanding of where we are, but it's not necessarily giving us any better understanding where we're going to be, simply because the world is changing. Just as the data flows become richer, data interactions, people interactions are becoming much more complex, markets are becoming more complex and more uncertain. And all of that means that the data supply and data analytics are constantly chasing the tail of real world, what's happening out there. Is access to more data and more powerful tools good for analysis or, or does it present new challenges? If so, what are they? Well, I think there is both dimensions to it. It's good for the analysis because our analysis becomes much more da data driven. There is more insights that we can generate and those insights are more scientific in their nature. In other words, the quality of them improves. But at the same time, there are significant challenges as well. For example, one of the major philosophical challenges that all of us face is the overconfidence bias. We generate a lot of data, we do a lot of data analytics. As a result of that, we get the insights and we believe that because those insights are scientific, inverted commas, um, those insights are true. That's not the case. All of us have to understand the limitations of the data analytics, also the, of our models and also of our predictive power. We have to be humble. And at the same time, in addition to it, we also have to apply a certain quantum of craft or art to interpreting the data. Beyond that, simply having large quantities of data, big data flows and big analytics outcomes doesn't necessarily mean that you can implement the data insight or the data itself into your business model. So as a result of that, the business decisions get sometimes sidetracked or sidelines, uh, sidelined, and as a result of that, the deployment of data insights is not as efficient, doesn't generate high enough returns. In other words, we can get somewhat obsessed with data, and data is not the end of it all. Data is just one of the tools. Right. And uh, Constantine, finally, as an academic, how hard is it for teaching methods to keeping up with new technology? For an academic, any change is a disruptive change and extremely painful change. Now, personally, I would love to go back to the blackboard and chalk, simply because the exposition level, the ability to communicate with students there is much higher. We too fall into the trap of technology-empowered innovation and delivery as well. So some of the tools, for example, the videos deployment and you know interactive deployment in the classroom of, say, for example, models and analytics is useful. But we also have to understand that the human understanding, human mind, human learning doesn't de develop simply because we deliver more information in a more concentrated format. It really is about communication and interaction with students. And I give you an example. One of the courses I teach has a very strong applied component whereby we come into the classroom, we give students the link up to the real live markets, we give them an account and we show them how to trade and they trade with us and learn from that interaction for over a week. Part of the assignment is thereafter continue with that trading and see what results they arrive at, by which channels, by which strategies and that's a part of the assessment. You can't really have that without the technology, you need technology to deliver that but in the end it is almost like an apprentice model which used to be taught equally successfully in other areas without all of that technology so is technology enabling in the classroom yes is it easy to incorporate efficiently and effectively into the classroom setting no it's very big challenge for us do we as academics like it no but we have to <laughs>